Hi everyone, welcome to my live demo. I'm just going to, I don't know why I'm showing you this because it's going to show up backwards, but you can print this out. I did put this on my um, web, uh, my Facebook site. So I'm just, here we go, just making sure I can see what I'm doing, make sure it all looks okay. And say welcome. Uh, let me know that you're here. Say hello, I should say. Howdy, Beto. Hey, going. So with me, I have some stencils. I have some blocks. Um, lots of different types, different different ones. I also have different types of paints with me. So I have the fabric creations. Just washing yours here. Oh, good. <laughs> um, oh, good, Michelle. Good to see you. Hi, Kathleen. Um, and I've got some sponges here, just there. I've got my plate, which I'm using. That's my highly technical palette. Um, I also have, I'll show you here. Some of you might have these already. Different types of, they're the stencils, different types of them. And they're the small ones. They're only $6 so if you're after those. And I do have this one, which I thought I had in my stock, but I might have... I haven't got it here. I'll probably keep one of those for me. Um, and then I've got the larger ones. Oh, gosh. And that's these ones. Okay. So at the moment, though, their stocks are pretty low at the suppliers. So I've really only got, you know, the two different designs and the, high, and the larger ones. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Helen. Um, but in the smaller ones, I've got a few. So I'll, I'll just show you the different ones I've got at the moment. Um, so there's that one. Then there's that one and the circular one. They're the only ones in stock at the moment that I have. Then I also have, which I haven't shown you guys, and I have some of these, and there's 16. I'm going to use a pack of these today, but I also have these. Now, you, some of you guys would have got some, if you're doing the, if you're doing the um, workshop, <clears throat> uh, they might be Michelle. I think I did put all the, the stamps up. Top one. This one, this one, that's the Paisley one. Yeah, I have that in stock. Um, yep, I can do that. Um, so the large ones, these are the large ones, and they're 15 each. So I'll pop your name on that, Brad. I'll just make, I've got a book with me, so I can write that up. Um, Brad, number 27216. Um... Oh, the other, this one. Oh, okay, so I take it back. It's not that one, it's this one, which is 27207. Yep, you can have one of those. So, um, yeah, so these here, you might have got two of, you know, these in the pack when you did, um, uh, when, when you signed up for the bomb, the block of the month, but if you don't, I do have two packs of these left and they do have all those background designs. Now, mind you, they are a cardboard type, so they're not going to last as long as, but they're still usable. Um, and I think that they're, um, they're great value. They're 39, but that's all I've got left of them is just two of these. All right. So if you're after them, I have two available. Now, oh. <laughs> And these little ones here, if you haven't already got these, they were a great bargain. They're only 16 bucks. Morning, Pat. Won't get to watch you for long today. That's okay because it'll be um, replayable. And I'm also going to upload all these and some others that I've done onto YouTube. So this one here comes with a whole heap of different types. Okay. So it has lots of little little ones in there lots and lots all right so this one here is 16 for that set obvious what uh if you were to seal them with something yeah you could absolutely a pack of the little ones please michelle sure um 
Michelle. Oops, spell it like my name then. E apostrophe L E E L E. Um, I'm gonna write your surname, otherwise I won't know. Armstrong and stencils. Sixteen. Yeah. All right. So, oh, the little ones, Helen. You want one too? Yep, sure. I'll pop those two aside and Helen. Um, and Helen Renneman. 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 Yep. Oh, I just went blank. So that's those. And then, of course, these ones. Um, now, these are a little bit stronger than these. Uh, but getting back to those cardboard ones, yeah, you could actually use a product called, I can tell you. Odie coat, which I have in stock. They're 22 a jar. It, gets, it makes things a fabric and card and paper. It makes it's a glue gel and it makes them um, waterproof. So say if you've got um, slippers and you sort of go outside with them or whatever, and you want to waterproof them, this is the stuff you use. Yeah. So Odie coat is that that one that would make them waterproof, and then that means you can wash them as well. Alrighty, so now I've got that open. Oh, the little bits are falling out because they do. Let's see if I can rescue some. I need that Odie coat by two. Sure, Debbie. Deb. I've had it for ages and I've just never um, promoted it <laughs> to Odie coat. Yep. Um, you can you can waterproof anything really with that stuff. Um, it can take up to three layers, um, and it gives a sheen. So quality and sheen to fabrics are project transparent, no acids, no solvents, and no odors. So although it does smell when you're using it, all right. Sure, Pat. <laughs> yep, no worries. Um. Sorry, I'm writing at the same time. So these little ones will give you the little ones that pop out of them. So some of them will have like little cut out bits. Looks like they've joined a bit there. I'm just going to get that one off. There we go. So if you've got little ones and they have some little cut out bits, sometimes you get lucky. And you get to keep the little cutout bits. Um, so there just happened to be a random one in there, which is great for me. But anyway, that's that one. Um, and I think it came out of... I oh, don't know, actually. Oh, I might have. No, I don't know exactly where it came out of. But anyway, I'm going to keep it. So let's put these back over here, just out of the way. The other thing I'm using, like I said, is the fabric paint, which is pretty cheap it's only six dollars and I do have more colors these days than I have had in past when I want a bit of sheen on something and a little bit of um, shine or a bit of uh, you know a bit of a, a pearlescent look then I'll use the Lumiere's and you can use these over the top and by using the super sparkle which is pretty much clear um, comes out white so it dries a bit clear um, that will actually bring a sparkle to, and I say sort of clear, um, because of the sparkle in it. And that'll, you can just add that to what you've already got. So that's another product I have, and they're $9.95. Um, do, do, do. Oh, there's another one of the stamps I was looking for. Sometimes I also use Gems paint. Um, that's also another pearlescent paint that I like to use. Um, and it's just a larger tub and they do have different colors to the um the uh lumieres so i will probably use some of these as well i do stock some of the colors of these um yeah sure michelle super sparkle sure um so yeah um yeah, so I probably will. Um, I might sort of tell you a bit later at the end of this what um, 
paints I've got left in the gems. They are a good quality. Um, and you can see they are luminescent. Um, you might need one extra layer compared to, say, the Lumiere. Um, they're just not as opaque as them. And Helen as well. Yep, sure, darling. Um, Helen Renneman. Alrighty, so let's get started. So I'll just clear some stuff and give yourself some room. I do have so many of these different types. They're, these, I think they are on the website. Um, I'm pretty sure they are. If I don't have it, I'll always let you know anyway and give you a credit. So I've been given a whole lot of Lumiere and the other non-pearl ones. Oh, happy days, I bet you. <laughs> I'd be happy. <laughs> That's lovely. So underneath this little bit of fabric, I have a bit of wadding. Now, this fabric got splashed and stained. It's a bit of coffee on there and stuff. And, and being, um, you know, anally retentive as I am, not, um, I'm not really caring too much. So I'm just going to use it anyway because regardless, it's getting painted over. So it'll just add, it'll just add to the, the piece. All right, so I'm just going to pop them aside. And while I do that, just with this little fella, I'm just going to open this one. I do like this one. Why am I knocking things over? That little piece is from the bottom corner of the... Thank you! <laughs> Jeez, Rado, you're quick. <laughs> little bottom of the dragonfly stencil. All right, so I like this one. Oops, a days. A bit of tape there. For this reason I just like the fact it gives me a bit of um, I can move it around and stuff and it's got nice bubble look to it now you'll also have your nice clean lucky duck here. Um, your nice clean um, what I call it a palette which is mine not <laughs> so not clean at all I do like to um, experiment with paints and colors and things like that I don't really have much of a plan as such as what I'm going to do um, and in saying that oh you'll hear by the way you'll hear Dottie in the background she's going to be doing some um, some sewing because we have a new um, pattern coming out very shortly so she's just putting the prototype together for me um, and I might get to show you some of it without the outside border on it so far by the end of this um, so what I'm going to do is, um, is I'm going to create an area, I um, might actually use that, and I'm just going to put a couple of circles around here that I want to keep free of a lot of paint. I might cross that one over. This is a little bit similar to what we're going to, to do in our class, but not the same. It just happens... Uh, it just as happens, just as it happens is good. <laughs> okay, well, that's right. Um, that's exactly right. This is just the way things are. Um, I want a bigger circle, so bear with me. I think that's bigger. Yeah, a little bit. And I'm just going to do this. Just give myself a larger circle. Doesn't matter, you can make them squares, you can make them whatever you like, but it's really good to um, to get yourself some something, a little bit of a boundary. The good thing about these paints is they're not too um, runny. So when you do stamp them on and things like that, they don't bleed. They sort of sit more on the fabric than they do bleed. I'm going to use, I think it's terracotta, no, what is it, crimson, it says crimson, doesn't look very red to me, and a bit of a lime green, and I'm going to get this baby, now this is that stencil, I've got my sponge, they're not damp, they're just dry, I'm folding it over in my hand just like that, okay, and I'm going to start I'm just putting some paint, but I don't want to overload my paint, my sponge either. 
and just holding it. Now, if you wanted to, you could tape it down, but I find that the tape sort of gets in my way a little. So I'm just going to sponge around, add a little bit more paint here and there, and just, just let the paint, like, just bleed it out a little bit so it doesn't look too square. Hold it still. And come in close, but not, you know, I'm not going right in. It doesn't matter if you overlap a little. It sort of um, won't make any major difference. And just a little bit more colour in there just to build that up. And that one there. Just going to build up. See how they're a little bit faint in there? I just want a bit of a stronger colour. A bit of a fluff in there. Okay, yep, there we go. So I'm just going to leave it there for a sec. And rather than wash that out, I'll grab another sponge. I'm going to grab the pink. It's a very light pink. So if I pop that here in front of you, you can see how light it is. So what I'm going to do, oops, grab my other sponge. Grab some of the pink, I'll show you, just whip it out there a little. Little bit of that red in there, crimson, and darken it up just to get a lighter version of that one. Okay, I'll just get some of the excess paint out. Probably didn't um, shake that one enough at all. And you can see now it's starting to do a little bit of a lighter look to it. And I'm bleeding it out. Okay. A little bit of a mix between the two. If you get any sharp edges, try and just soften them up a little bit with a bit of paint. going to take that away and you can see how nice that's looking already. Now grab a little bit of that red paint so you can see what I'm doing. Bit of that red one, that crimson one. Let's just go around the outside here a little. Just smudge it out. Hang on to and these are just makeup sponges, you know, they're, they're not very expensive. They're only about 35 cents each, something like that. I have a few left in store at the moment, but if, you know, if you went to a $2 shop or something, like, you'll probably find them there. Okay, so there's a reason why I'm putting a red one there. Dotty, you want to have a look on yours just to make sure it hasn't frozen. It's frozen on my screen and I'm just hoping it hasn't frozen in real life. Thanks, love. Now I'm going to put a little bit of black. So I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to overlap a fraction and just do some partial. Is it working all right, your end? Doesn't want to load. What are those paints called? Oh, here they are. Um, yeah, not frozen here. Oh, good. What are those paints? Helen, these are um, these are called Fabric Creations. They're a cheaper version. They are not shiny or shimmery or anything like that. They are just another fabric paint. They're designed for fabric. Um, I do have them in stock. There's, I thought there was about 12 colours, but there's more like about 15 or so. Um, and they're only, yeah, they're only six bucks each. So, 
So then I've overlapped, see? See how I'm overlapping and it just creates another, another dimension to it. Going to get another one of like this one. Working okay, your end, good. Okay, seems to be just my computer, I think. Might tap on it and see what that does. And maybe refresh. <laughs> So now I'm going to grab a green. It's a really limey green. It's like really lime. All right. And I'm just going to line up probably in the crossover a little, I think. I think I'll do the crossover thing. And as long as I don't dab on that sort of red color too much, it won't um, make it like mud. I've got to watch that I don't make it look like mud. So if you wanted to get more colour, you would press and roll. Roll your, roll your hand at the same time. All right. As you're trying to build up sort of um, sort of a soft area let the paint run out of your sponge a bit and then go to the fabric just like that okay so I'm happy using that at the moment but I'm going to change so I do have this one in stock I don't know if I have this one in stock I should say I'd have to have another look again because I can't remember exactly what I've got it's got caught up it's been a poop one a little bit of a swirl I'm going to go back to my black just dab on the black and I'm going to put a bit of a swirl just hold on to it a bit more in that and I might get a smaller one on its side like that over here, cross them over, okay, you don't have to be precision like, like I'm, you know how I'm centering and things like that, you don't have to do, do that if you don't want to, you can just sort of randomly place them where you like, a bit more of the red over here, so I'm going to go red, And I like, you can use this also on any colour fabric. So you don't have to have a white background. You can start with um, a black or, you know, you can use all the luminescent ones and, and you know, really, you'd have to build it up because of the, um, the uh, shiny sort of side of it. They tend to go a little bit fainter when they dry. They dry lighter. Um, so... Black now, just going to cross some over, let it build up a bit. And when I say build up, I'm talking about the paint layers. Okay. Come over this way. I might get my light pink one again. Not fussy cut if it's fussy dabbing. <laughs> I am doing a little bit of a fussy thing, aren't I? I apologise. <laughs> I'm just going to go this side. Oh, a bit too much paint there. It might bleed. Yeah, it has a little, but that's okay. I know stresses. Fussy dabbing, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Grab this one. <laughs> My dog started snoring. That's candy snoring underneath the table, if you can hear that in the background. <laughs> so this is the lighter one. The 
lighter pink. You know, the two pinks I put together before. Okay. Now. So. I do have a flutty by. I'm just thinking about where I'm going to put him. And I'm going to get some, probably, probably the green, maybe, maybe a light, maybe, no, I'll go the lighter pink, sorry, my bad. So now I'm just going to dab the area and put a bit of a, a colour, but it's not too heavy. And you really have to work it in to get the extra, to, to move those um, edges. So you really have to um, get it in. So now I've just started doing a bit of a swipe motion, just to soften them a bit, going over a couple of times. I don't want it too wet. And to be honest with you, probably not going to see any of those little lines that I've got there. So I'm putting some pink behind or over the top of the burgundy and it won't, it won't change the burgundy at all because the burgundy has pretty much sealed itself into the, into the uh, fabric. See how the, the black's not moving? It's already sort of sealed in the, in the fabric. It's dried. So that light pink with a little bit of that burgundy red is just sort of blending in behind those stamps. So it's not a stark white anymore, at least in that area. The, the pink in this um, in this paint is a little bit runnier. I think it's just the kind of colour it is. Okay. Now, stuff all over my hands. I'm going to grab this one, which is like an orange. I don't need a huge amount. And I'm going to grab the yellow. It's bright. I find a spot on my plate. I'm running out of spots. And I'm going to get, I might use this one, but use the other side. Get some orange. And this one. Overlapping a little bit, and I'm just putting some orange there, some orange there, and I'll build this up. This might be a good time to tape it down. So, Dobby's going to grab me some masking tape, and she's the best ever. <laughs> Thanks, sweetheart. Hi Dotty, someone is sewing, I can hear them. That would be the lovely Dotster. Hello, whoever. <laughs> that would be Rado. Hello, Rado. <laughs> we'll see you next weekend. Next weekend? No, Gidget. Oh no, Rado, yes, we will see Rado. She's coming to the show. Okay. Um thought you were talking about the retreat. No, no, no. Show. Oh. Show. Sure. Sure. So I'm just putting. A little bit much there, it might bleed some random colours in, or say spots. I'm not really picking too much. And I'm going to go then back to green. 
Judy says hi, Dot. Hello, Judy. <laughs> and I'm going to put the green down here. Fussy, yeah, fussy, um, what's the name, what do they call it? Um, sponging. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to put the green here. If you wanted to, you could use a paintbrush, but I find that the bristles of the brush sometimes go underneath these. Um, I don't mind if the paint sort of overlaps a little, it's no biggie. Um, I'm going to get, oops, here's the other side of this one. Watch later, have an appointment. Oh no, I live too far away. No, she lives too far away to come to um, Craft Alive in Shep. Rado's not coming. No, she can't come. So, just placing some yellow in there and like I say it doesn't have to be the same one side to the other it's just creating a look Then we're going to put some of the berg in here, but nice and thick. And but again, you don't want it to, to bleed, so don't do it like dripping wet type thing. You're better off to work up a couple of layers than you are to put it on too dark to start with, like too heavy, I should say. And then we've got some black. Which we are going to use for the little eye tin lip. Start there. And I'm pressing as I go so I can press the ink out of the sponge. Now if you get some of the black in those areas, don't stress, just blend them in. So they Less. Don't sweat the little things. Okay. Now let's see what we've got. So I might just do a bit more green on that. Just give it another coat on that green. Just to build it up a little. And the yellow because they're the lighter colours. So I'm just going to build them up. on the other side and I'm going to do one more thing I've just had an idea an epiphanary epiphany you ready for me epiphan epiphany <laughs> all right see this one oh hang on I can see a message but I can't read it it's too too big for my little thing um, okay, so oh, here I love the black. You can always add, can't always take off. Yeah, loving the colors. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Pat lives too far away. Love the butterfly. I haven't been able to use my sewing machine for like three weeks. Medical reason, yeah, I know. Um, I'm so behind my personal schedule. Yeah, it, it's like that. Love the but simple yet so effective. Yes, the butterfly. I, I can't seem to get that at the moment, so don't ask me. I can't get it for you. Um, but um, yeah, it's a it's a ripper. I did order them in. So using this one, here's your little bit of fussy. So I'm going to use 
the side of my sponge, squeezing it, and I'm going to put in, wait, I'm going to lift and hold that down. And I'm just going to put in that little half circle there, a little swirl. All right. And then I'm going to go over this way and do it over here. And I've left this butterfly down, so I reckon that's going to look cute. Another one here, but I'll do it half off the thing. So using a stencil over a stencil. Like that. Now we're going to take it away. So. Ta -da. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Now, if you wanted to, you can get a nice permanent marker on the wig. Find a new one and go around. Just remember it will bleed a little because of the, the fabric, all right? Or you can do these ones. But with as far as in regards to the bleeding, if it's that big a deal, when you stitch, you can probably cover that up anyway, if that makes sense. The paint's still a bit wet, so the pen, the pen's sort of being a bit of a poop, but anyway. We'll just keep going. Just to give you the idea. Mm. Yeah, he could machine embroider a butterfly. Absolutely, why not? But once you once you outline it, you'll probably find all of a sudden it'll just take shape, and you'll go, "Oh, all I need to do is stitch around that." Sorry, my text is not happy about the wet paint. I just go to do. I'll go over one side of it and um, just to show you what I mean. And then um, we'll move on. Okay, so that gives you an idea. And then you can... Okay nice without light yeah yeah absolutely either way is lovely so that gives you an idea of with and without so there's your without and there's your with like i say it's um still damp so i probably wouldn't have done the texture as a general rule uh, until it was dry um it looks great with the outline done yeah it, it sort of just makes it pop it brings it out from all the background stuff now, the other thing I'm going to do is use these. So, getting my coloured sponge, it's my red one, going along here, fill up my sponge, and then just dab it on here. Or if you've got a roller, you can roll it on as well, paint it on whichever way suits. I find that when I paint on, I end up with too much paint, and it just globs everywhere. And sometimes when I do this, I don't have enough, but... You know, either way is fine. Depends on the look you're looking for. Alright. You have a stash of fabrics. Now the mind's busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I can go to the black one. Probably a little bit more paint than that I did before. So, I don't want them too bright. I actually want them to sort of sit 
behind everything. So that one, there's the orange. Bit of an Aztec thing. some yellow straight on top and that'll bring out like a lighter orange you can mix the green too if you want but it might go a little bit brown so just put a bit of extra paint on you see it's a bit globby now so it might might bleed everywhere but we'll see how we go um, Yes, it does. It brings it forward. Thanks, Wendy. I'm going to pop that one there. That looks nice. And I'll just go to the second one and make it a bit lighter. Oh, it's a pretty different colour. Okay, so I need to now just bring up some colour into the background. I'm not going near, and there's my spots, that my coffee spots that are no longer there. Do you notice I went over the other spot over there and it didn't even you didn't even notice that there was a spot there. You can't see it now. And it green over the green, and you can see that that stencil is still showing through. See? See how it shows through still? Uh, brings it forward from the swirls. Yeah, it does, Rado. Absolutely will. Yeah. So if you notice, I've got some fairly rich colours going on around these circle parts. Um, and you'll see eventually why. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit of yellow orangey colour there that I sort of made. It's going to make a little bit of a brownie colour, a bit of a poop colour, <laughs> but that's all right. And I'll grab the orange, leave them in, with each other, nice and rich around those circles. And I want to sort of have them cross over in colour. Now, if you did want to, you could use a roller and roll the colour on as well. But I find the fabric, you'd have to really tape the fabric down. Um, and it uses a lot of paint, just to let you know, using a roller. Where's my bird gone now? That one will do. Oh, what types of fabric are you using, Michelle, please? And what will you make with this? Um, this will end up going on one of my um, bags that I've got. I'm thinking of maybe the um oh, the new um what they call it um satchel one or the hold all so yeah i'll um it'll go on one of those sort of things right. so even though i'm putting the red burgundy color over that stamp you can still see the stamp so it doesn't take unless i was to put like thick thick um black over the top it, it will always stand out okay and the beauty of this is i haven't poured any extra paint i'm using all of what i've got in my palette plate slash plate <laughs> and I'm not wasting. I hate waste of paint. It drives me crazy. It's paint's so expensive, and yet there's so many people who do waste it, and it just drives me nutty. I hate it. I hate it if I have to throw out a palette of paint because I've got to stop doing a painting for whatever reason halfway through, and I lose the whole palette because I don't have time to finish it. it drives me balmy. <laughs> pet hate, there you go. <laughs> My pet hate is waste of paint. So I'll go over that one with a bit of green. 
and you can really say it still. Blending the two together, build up your, your deep color in your green as well. And cross your colors over. This would actually go really well in um, just a block on a, on a quilt too. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't make a whole quilt like this, similar to our block of the month. Um, and just create your own. No one ever said you have to do it as, you know, um, old-fashioned quilting. It doesn't have to be. No rules. There's your next art quilt. Okay, so coming down the sides a bit, I'll put a little bit of orange here. And a bit down here. Yellow, there's a scraping there. And I often find when I do, I do teach um, or tutor some art classes as well. And I find that um, that's when I notice the waste <laughs> in the art class. Um, and when I um, do workshops with fabric painting, because I tend to like to pour out the paint for people because... They, um, they don't um, quite get the waste factor. And this is coming off the page a little. So it has disappeared a little bit. I've probably mixed up too many colours there. But that's all right, we'll just... even putting a little bit of black over the top of that one sorry about that as long as it's not heavy it'll sit fine looks more like a gray i love how the first layer shows through the yes me too yeah so just putting that there and that'll help that and I might just redo one of these with a little bit of black and get my sponge and I'm going to do it black this time and that'll make it stand out. Don't know which way I was up, but it doesn't matter. There it is. And go down here. And I'll have a little bit of residue on that one. Push hard. And I'll just do them on an angle up there. I think. Dry now, it's still a little bit wet. Just chuck that on there. Now, I have this one, I do like this one. It's very simple but very effective basket weave. So, a bit of paint on there, and you can get yourself a nice basket weave. Oops. Now, let's get back to some of these tiny stencils. Where are they? There they are. I like 
like that one. I do like that one, eh? There we go. <laughs> I like too many. That's the problem. I like everything. I want one of each. <laughs> Alright, just pop them over there. So this one. And I have... I need some, actually, I need some more of the black. So when I put out paint, I don't know if you can see that, but I only put out a little bit at a time. That's like when I teach the ladies how to sew, they tend to throw their scraps, yeah, instead of sewing them, for, yeah, saving them. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you tend to find, I think because, because it's just a lack of knowledge, I think, majority of the time, they just don't understand. Um, and I sort of go, no, you can actually put a... Um, plastic cover over that put it in the fridge and you can save it that's got a little thingy there come out um oh i didn't know that yeah you can reuse it oil paint even you know Less is more, my mother told me. Okay, so I've got the area I want. Now I'm just going to darken it up, but without making it sodden. I don't want to make it too um, wet that it bleeds. So... You did notice I did tape this one just because it's um, got so many little areas that can lift. There we go. I'm going to come across it now. Stick that down there. I'm going to do a lighter one. So just one layer. And letting it go over the stamp a little bit too. Don't sort of freak out if you go over your stamp a little. I'll grab some green. We're just starting to turn into a brown, <laughs> but that's okay. More is more, says Michelle. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to come from that way, and I'm just going to do that little area and just hold on to it. Now, get your finger still on there, and using this down here so that one I'm gonna come across this one because see how it's got a straight line I want to sort of sorry about that move that line remove that line I should say a little bit a little bit up here in the corner a little bit here go on that angle and let's get another one I like that swirl so we'll go back to the swirls I found it, there it is. So we'll go back here. Don't need to hold that one down. I've got paint all over me. But I am going to just throw my swirls in and move it a little. Throw them in across there. Sort of 
works. Me like it. Now we got that bit done. I've got stuff everywhere. I'm going to grab my Lumiere paint. No, I'm not. Change my mind. I'm going to grab my blue, which is a royal blue. No worries, Judy. Sixteen dollars a pack. Oh, sorry, I've missed comments. My bad. It's because I'm playing. This looks interesting. The little stencils using it come in a pack, and if they do, how much? Yes. So Lynette, um, they come in a little pack like this. I've got oops, a daisy, two left, and they're sixteen dollars. Um, yeah, no worries, Judy. We'll catch you next time. I'm just going to put some royal blue down, and. little paintbrush that's not really special <clears throat> excuse me so I've chucked it on that bit there and I'm going to paint the blue in here It might pick up some of that red, but I'm not stressed over it. And I'll just go up to that line the best I can. If you wanted to, you could tape it. Or if you've got a, a stencil, that will give you a circle. Yay. But this works just as well. Good old paintbrush. Um, the fabric that I'm using, someone asked me before, the fabric I'm using is just a homespun. Um, I do like to use Percale and you can use Batik. So you can actually grab some of the Batiks you've got and say you've got one in a colour that you don't really like. It's not quite there. And you go, right, I want to make this more red or more green. Then you can go ahead and paint over it. And the pattern of the batik will stay and the um, uh, the colour of the background or whatever will change so you can do that too so I've just whopped out some more paint here I'm going to put another one here and I'm going to see what I'm going to do in a sec fair amount of paint because I want a solid cover could need two layers, just depending on how it dries. I'm thinking not, though. I'm thinking I might be able to get away with it. Alright. So. That one. I'm just going to... A bit of blue there. Mm. Is that? That's the wrong one. I just want to. This is just a textile colour from um, Jacquard or Lumiere ones, but they're not shiny. So I'm just popping a bit of white straight on there and mix it in on my fabric so I can get a lighter one behind. If I don't do that, they're just going to blend into each other. A bit more blue. Sorry, I hope my hand's not covering the screen. And again, don't stress if your outside edges aren't perfectly smooth. Um, you can always, and we will, and I will, be going around it with a permanent marker. All right. So that's pretty damn good. I'm happy with that. 
and a bit of other light blue there, but just put that in there. Now, Super Sparkle. <laughs> Sounds super. I'm going to use it from the lid, and naughty me, I didn't put water out, so I'm just going to use it straight. So, so you can see how it creates a shimmer. much on my brush so see how it it's there you can see it and it'll bring a sparkle to that actual color but without taking the color over if that makes sense yeah yeah so this one's still a bit wet but it'll work just the same Okay, and this is where you can turn around and go into here. Not shouldn't have done this blue paint brush, but you can get in here and you can put sparkle all the way over your butterfly if you wanted to. So you can sparkle it up. A little bit like, like eyeshadow. <laughs> it reminds me of the old-fashioned eyeshadow, the sparkly eyeshadow. Okay, so I can't see if you can see that okay there, yep, you can. Okay, so I haven't done the other side, obvious reasons, because I haven't finished it. Um, so, now I've done that, I'm going to get my brush, and I want to get the paint out, but rather than washing it, I'm just going to <laughs> blend it in to the edge of this, rather than wash it out, because I'm being naughty and cheeky. See, I told you more is more. <laughs> more is more, you reckon? <laughs> and get a little bit of my black that I had and just get it a little bit of shading. And moving around in that sort of shade, like that angle with the angle of the curve. And that will give it that cylindrical look okay and there there all right then you get the white if I can find white oh, that's this sparkle white oh where's the flat white oh I had it here before where is it so I'll put it back. Oh gold, a very oh there it is. And just see that now. Alright, this straight out of the tube. Just gentle squeeze. I don't know if you can see my hand. You probably can't see what I'm doing because my hand's in the way. Hang on, let me turn it around before I do it. Gentle squeeze. There it is. A little bit more. Like that. And one on this side. Alright. Then, with the end of your brush, put your brush in it and start spreading it out. In that sort of direction. Probably put a little bit much on that one, but that's all right. Now, the way to work it off would be to get in there and push it in. A little bit of blue. 
much of that would be. Okay. So me likey, but I like everything. So, you know, what do I know? Um, I'm just going to, with this, because I know you said more is more, but it's freaking me out that I put all that effort into those. So I'm just going to, um, with my brush, put that back in there. Oh, I think it was a different one. Yeah, this one. Um, and I'm going to put it in like that. So I'm going to, what they call stipple. That's better. So stipple it in with a brush. Nice. And then I'll just put the smaller one up here. And I'm going to get this. I'm going to lay it back over. Because I do like the little blingy things. But I oh, know I need another brush because otherwise it's going to have black everywhere. Get a little bit of that orange. And just touch it up. It's not finished until I say. So a little bit of the orange, just stippling. In there. Okay, just move that over there. bit of that berg just because I put too much of that on and I didn't want to lose the color behind it do you know what I mean So, um, what have we got there? By fun from uh, to Rado. See you, Rado. Um, if you're selling the print blocks with stencils, looks good, Michelle. Will you be selling? Yeah. So the the print blocks. Um, I can probably do that side now. The print blocks are these sort of ones. So there's uh, quite a few different types, and they're 15 each. There's lots. Okay. So that's them. And they, the, I only have two left of these, which are these little stencil packs, and there's, they're 16. And then I have, oh my gosh, I don't want to get paint in the top. Oh, these are six each. Oh, I've got sticky tape on the top. I've only got three designs at the moment. So that one, that one, hi Louise, and this one, and there's six each, and they're stencils. And then in these, I only have two, and they're larger, these are 13. I only have two left at the moment because I'm doing a, a block of the month on <clears throat> with stencils and that, so a lot of them have gone. So that's that's how I've got to this. Um, just to go over this, I'm reiterating now. Probably doesn't help that I put the, the text a brand new one. Do you want to grab me a newie because I, I haven't actually put wet paint on? <laughs> Didn't help that I put a brand new text out. Just there, love, on the cash register. There's a box of them, yeah. Just put um, a brand new, tada, um, 
texture straight onto wet paint and that, that didn't help it at all. There we go, that's better. So what I'm doing here is just sort of going around. Um, like I say, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be fun. Lots of days that one can go in there. And I'll just do that one there, which means I need to do that one up there. Hopefully that wasn't wet. Bear with me while my hands in the way. And you can go in between these lines if you want to. So I only went between a couple. And once the paint's dry, it will draw straight on the paint. So you can see that's dry and it's drawing straight on it. Yeah. I'm just going to move it around. Can I get this? Uh, oh, can I grab a set of 16? Oh, hang on. So we've got Lynette would like 16. Hang on, darling. Let me just get my stuff. I've thrown all my stuff on my writing pad. Hang on. <laughs> all right so so Lynette, Lynette Cherry yep so um, and Lynette Cherry yep um and Rado would like the circles Rado circles C-I-R-C-L-E-S um all right so I'm just trying not to dip my hand in that wet white because <laughs> that would not be much fun trying to fix that I could have just stuffed my pen again so <laughs> we'll just keep, keep going and if you get lost like you don't know where because of this one here you are you're never going to look at stencils the same way again I'm telling you once you've done stuff like this um, you're just going to keep wanting to do it it's so much fun it's so easy to do and it's effective look how effective it is so this one here and when i when i um because what i've done to one side of the butterfly i really have to do the other so once i've drawn this on i need to go and um, put that shimmery stuff on and just touch up that paint again just to finish it off and i did all those Yep. Ah, oh, see, just put my finger in the wet paint. <laughs> like what you're doing here. All right. So because that's quite a glob, it's going to need overnight to dry. But in the process of doing this, I'm just gonna dip the old finger in the, the sprinkly stuff, the the super the spring of sparkle. But I can only talk, and just spread it out a little. Um. And that'll give it a little bit of shine. Remind it seriously reminds me of eyeshadow. You know when you're putting on eyeshadow and it's got and you want to just put on a little bit of a highlight? <laughs> just reminds me of that. The girls, young girls these days putting on eyeshadow that they do. And I'm not staying in the lines if you've noticed, I'm just sort of putting it over it. So that's super sparkle. It's called. That's part of the uh, Lumiere range. There we go. I didn't overdo that side this time. All right, and then that's also on the moons. Okay, so if you wanted to add a little bit more sparkle, you could, like a bit of a shine spot. Um, but I don't think I've got enough on these at the moment, to be honest. Not that much on them. <laughs> Alright. So, back to my texture. Hopefully it's not completely dead. Go around your little body of your fella. You might as well, if you've got to be consistent. So go around him as well. And 
I'm just doing a faint line around the antennae because I'll probably go around them and stitch. So that is that. That is it. Um, yeah, me like it. I like it. So a little bit of red in there just to model up his body a little bit. And I've got a little bit of yellow that I reckon I need. That was a bit much. I need my other brush. This one will do. So I'm literally just, um, like I said before, it's just what they call a stipple, where you, you're dabbing at it with the brush. Just to brighten up some of those, those areas. Where's my stencil? I'd feel a bit more safe if I had that. Cool. Come on, stand still. There we go. Happiness. So, masterpiece. There we go. How cool is that? Would you applique on or just stitch around when putting onto something um i would i would probably if i wanted it quilted or stitched first i would do that first and then attach it to um something so depending on what i'm going to attach it to and how big or small i need to cut it um will also make a difference as to whether i um um sort of cut it out or, or you know any of those sort of things so um, I'm just getting rid of some of that stark white look there a little bit too white um, yeah so I am going to use it in a project um, but um, I just wanted to really show you guys that you can use not just thread and fabric um yeah thanks christopher uh, christopher oh christopher that's just surname <laughs> that's wendy <laughs> good god i need to get my eyes checked again <laughs> i've got the glasses on you wouldn't even know it looks fantastic i think it's great and i think it's going to look really good on a bag or something like that what do you reckon dotty pretty good yeah it looks pretty very cool good. very cool so kids would love it and once that dries it's way too wet for me to draw on but i will get a permit marker and go around it with that all right so thank you for joining me i will see you guys i know i said one o'clock but i'm thinking it'll be about 1 30 now <laughs> so um gives me a bit of a break in between and have something to eat yeah all right so guys i'll see you in about 45 minutes and i'll have another demo on and i'll tell you what that demo will be it will be the pillowcase so you're going to see a project done with a pillowcase and we're finishing using something you've already seen made. So I will see you guys soon. Bye.